not saying I'm a relic of an ancient past. It's, some, it's not some forgotten liturgy, some ritualistic thing that churches do. This is the most sacred moment of any church. Because we look back, we look forward, and yet we live in the present. Because as we look back at why we do this, we should be reminded that this is a time of joy for this family. <coughs> for this, our spiritual family, and for the Lord. I remind you that you do realize that Jesus didn't walk around with a sour faith, right? You do realize that Jesus walked with joy and yet dedication and determination. I understand that. And it was just something that was unparalleled in, in that cultural context that was just so scandalous that the Bible records how people responded. Children were absolutely of no value whatsoever. Men, children, only to Jewish fathers to perpetuate the lineage. Girls to make more babies. But insofar as children go, they were relegated to a point of absolute insignificance. None, no good whatsoever except for child. That you could use them out in the field, that you could work with them, that you could use them as baby making machines. But other than that, they serve no purpose. Women too. There's no place for women in that society. There's no place for, that, for women in that culture. They had no voice. They had nothing that they could add. And yet when Jesus came on the scene, Jesus did two things that were just out. Outstanding yet unbelievable. He lifted children. And He lifted women to a place that they had never, ever had. Do you not know? Remember, the rabbi, Jesus, the teacher, Jesus, the rabbi, Jesus, who had already turned water to wine, who had already raised the dead, who had already made broken limbs mended, and all kinds of things that he did. In the midst of his ministry, when he was at the pinnacle of his power and popularity, on the sermon of the Mount, with the feeding of the, of the thousands, remember that? Who was the major player? A child. You not remember how it was that when all this bickering and religious bickering was going on around him? I believe that Jesus just simply said, oh, please, give me a break. And he walked over and he took a small child and he put that small child in his lap and he said, such are these of the kingdom of heaven. For if we do not and cannot become as one of these, we shall not enter into the kingdom of God. And the adults are scratching their heads and trying to figure out what, what is he talking about? Can I help? Directed towards these proud parents. When she was in the water of the woman, did you blame her? Ah, didn't that? Did she do anything for you? No. Yet you claim her as your own. Is that not what convenient grace is? It is. That in creation, God claims us. Do you know that? In creation, God says, this is mine. Look at what I've made. I remind you, God does not make none. God makes a one-off. Every one of us are unique creations of the Almighty, the maker of, of the universe. All that encapsulates who God is to you. That God looked down the corner of time and God chose. He didn't have to. God chose to make you. God chose to fashion you. May I help? When you look in the mirror, I don't care what society says about you. It doesn't matter what your color may be. It doesn't matter what your gender may be. It doesn't matter what flaws may be evident or not. Remember this. God made you as God wanted you to be. And I realize this. If God made me like you wanted me to be, I can, I can embrace who I am. Amen. And if I can embrace who I am, if I like the skin I'm in, nobody, nobody can dismiss me. Nobody can ever put me down unless I let them. Nobody can ever tell me I'm insignificant or worthless. Nobody can say that. Nobody can do that unless I let them. I choose not to. Amen. And so this is a precious creation of Almighty God. This God placed on the Potter's will, and this God made in the mother's womb and yet brought to life. And there she is with these proud parents and others and us before God this day.
And it reminds me that as God looks down, the question still remains. There she is. Yet what can she do to offer these children? What can she do to get anything from this mother? It's not what we do. It's what he did. Isn't it? It's not what we do that gains us heaven and faith. It's not what we do that gains us access and entrance into the furthest. It's not what we do. It's not what we are. It's not what we become. It's who he is and what he did. Well, I remind you, when the Son of God suffered, bled, and died on Calvary's cross, when he bled out for sinners such as me and you and us and others, he didn't have to. It didn't have to come by means of human birth. It didn't have to come by means of this fragile investment. Yes, he, but he did. Do you think there might be a story there? It seems that it might not be saved just for Christmas. Because on this day that we celebrate this baptism, we claim the presence of God. We claim the promises of God. We claim the provisions of God. We claim the peace of God. We claim the favor of God. We claim the promises that are attached the best that we do. Because God looks down and sees Maria. And God looked down and saw Brian and Nicole. And God choreographed their lives in such a way that they came together and loved one for the other. And as a result of their love one for the other, we have the blessings of Maria. And so God does what God does so that we may be blessed and He may be blessed. Amen. So as we uh, share... I remind you, my brothers and my sisters, <laughs> dearly beloved, <clears throat> baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of the Lord Jesus. It is through this grace that we become partakers of His righteousness and heirs of life everlasting. Those who receive the sacrament of baptism, through it come to the fellowship of Christ's holy church by whatever denomination and name it may be. Our Lord has expressly given to little children a place among the people of God. A holy privilege that must not, shall not be denied to them. Do we not remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ? How he said, let the children come unto me, do not hinder them, for to such belong the kingdom of God. For I am the God of you, what bring free
Brian and Nicole, do you announce your faith in Christ Jesus and show that you want to study Him, know Him, love Him, and serve Him as one of His disciples, and that you won't bid your child to do the same? To this end, it is your duty to teach her as soon as she is able to learn the nature of this holy sacrament, that you might watch over her in her education, that she may not be led astray to direct her and her feet to the sanctuary of the Almighty, to restrain her from those things that might hurt her, from those things that might do her harm. And as much as it as lies within you to raise this child up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord who has given this gift to you. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church? And will you, by your teaching, by your example, guide her to accept Christ for herself, to profess her faith openly and to lead a Christian life? If so, you may answer, we will. It's not allowed. To the greater family, to you who are witnesses, you who are members of this family, to the extended family of faith gathered here this morning, nurturing a child is not the only duty of the parents, not only the duty of these parents, but it is, it is also the responsibility of grandparents, aunts, uncles, of a larger extended family of faith and their own family. Do all, do all that you can as members of this child's family. Do you agree and will you agree to aid and assist Nicole and Brian as they raise and as they nurture this child in the, in the ways and in the word of the Lord? Of course, you may respond to me. Brian and Nicole, what name have you given to this child?
We welcome you, my little sister, into this community of faith and faithful. May you both give and receive God's gracious gifts. Amen and amen. amen. God, our Father, God, our Savior, God, who loves us, God, who protects us, God, who provides for us, God, who gives us peace, God, who gives us so many promises. We thank you for this gift of Maria. It is our prayer that Maria will come to know the joy and suffering of being concerned about everyone that she meets, that she will see each person worthy of dignity and acceptance. We pray for her growth into fuller and deeper levels of humanity, as she lives the example of Christ out in her life. We pray that Maria will understand that you alone can give life meaning and purpose and direction. O oh God, our Lord, O oh God, our Savior, that she will be on her knees before you in words of repentance and thanksgiving, on her feet before you in deeds of love and, and compassion. This, our, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 I remind you, this, this is only a part of their journey. This is only a part of our journey. Do, do, do you realize what a joyful thing it was? Can you imagine how it must have been? I remind you, we're so far removed from the simplicity of faith. We're so far removed because the church, unfortunately, has messed the threads up on what this means. This is not about it's not about the church, though it is. It's certainly not about the pastor. And that day, the pastor would take off the robes of religion, the garb of pastor, and would put on the robe of a servant. Do you not remember when Jesus washed his feet? How he took off the robes of the master, and he donned nothing but the simple garb of a servant? That's what we are today. We are here not to do nothing more and get nothing less than to be a servant of this family, of this child, and of Almighty God. As we look upon this child and this ceremony of this morning, can we not remember our own when somebody somewhere took us in their arms and a family of faith somewhere gathered around us and when the water was poured on us or when we were immersed within it, or by whatever means or mechanism or mode of baptism that was yours, do you not remember how it was? I do. And can you not remember how it was then and how you grew? How we should. And how the brothers and sisters stood by our side and held us accountable. How that teachers and others were trying to share with us the gift of God's Word. And how they would take our little hands and fold them and pray with us. And how others would nurture us and others would do all that they could. Do you not remember those days? <coughs> this is the life of the church. The ritual, the litur liturgical aspects of it, that's kind of handy. But the heart of the church is this. The heart of the church is to serve young families and those in need. The heart of the church is these boxes. The heart of the church is food baskets. The heart of the church is to reach out with open arms with nothing, nothing, except the love of God and the grace of God at our disposal to share and to give with whomever. And so as, as, as we manifest God's grace, this family has too. As soon as we sing our closing hymn and as soon as we say our closing prayer, they have prepared a time of fellowship for you in the fellowship hall. So don't run. If you choose to and want to, come back by the back. Uh, share a kind of fellowship and food with this young family and their family. And then we will, we will go into Sunday school as you choose to if you want to. And so as soon as we sing our last song in prayer prayers, I would invite you to the, the family back to the back to have a time of fellowship if you so choose. Is it okay? All right, stay with me. 